If they steal my power, they could conquer the universe. You have to help me. No, I don't. Please, it's life or death. Supersonic. Good morning, my rural chum. Mr. Dr. Robotnik. I'm going to give you five seconds to tell me where it is. Wait, don't hurt him. <laughs> Road trip. Woo -woo! This can't be happening to me. Oh my God, stop the car right what? now. What? The world's largest rubber band ball? We gotta see it. No, this is not some fun family road trip. <laughs> eh, you're right. It was lame. Gift shop was cool, though. Whatever this creature is, I'm going to uncover the source of its power. Yeah. Hey. I just thought you might like a latte with steamed Austrian goat milk. Of course I want a latte. I love the way you make them! We gotta lay low. Let me show you how it's done. Hey, hey. Aloha. This is Trinidad, the Island Man, your Island Man. Coming to you live once again from beautiful Hawaii here on the island of Oahu. Bringing you, yes you, the best movie reviews on the entire island of Oahu. And yes, this is Trinidad, the Island Man, your Island Man. And, uh... Last night, Thursday night, opening night of Sonic the Hedgehog, uh, the new movie that just came out. Um, I wanted to give you my review. Um, I know this review is a little late, um, you know, the following day here Friday. Um, I'm still kind of recovering from a cold, still kicking my butt. <laughs> Who knows, maybe the corona or something, I don't know. Uh, but I'm okay, and so... I'm still going out there seeing movies spread my germs, so watch out. <laughs> but uh, remember our rainy scale. Shock and thumbs up. It's good to see. I recommend it. Shock and thumbs down. It's bad to see. It's junk. I don't recommend it. And for Sonic the Hedgehog movie, which stars Jim Carrey, James Marsden, uh, Ben Swartz as the voice of Sonic the Hedgehog, and Tika Sumter as James Marsden's wife uh, in this movie. It is, surprisingly, a shock and thumbs up. Uh, I enjoyed this movie. It was funny, it was clever, um, you know, and most importantly, especially after the tragedy of Birds of Prey or Harley Quinn or whatever that movie is, um, it was true to the source of its origin, Sonic the Hedgehog, uh, and also you know, added to it, extrapolated to it. Um, that being said, so it is a shock of thumbs up. That being said, I am not all that familiar with Sonic the Hedgehog. Uh, the video game, you know, for those who weren't alive back in the uh, uh, early 90s, uh, late 80s, I think, you know, Nintendo had, you know, swarmed the market. Uh, I was a long long ago Atari 2600 uh, man myself <clears throat> you know um, but you know I jumped on the Nintendo bandwagon like everybody else uh, the original 16-bit uh, and then the the little bit more with the Super NES um, but in the interim a rival came up called Sega Genesis and they had a whole bunch of games and their whole thing was that uh, you know, they went from cartridges, just like Nintendo, uh, but then they were one of the ones that went up into, like, 32 bits at that time, into, uh, you know, an actual, like, optical disc, you know, what would later become, you know, a CD-ROM, later become, you know, the DVDs and such like that. So their graphics were, like, you know, on par with the Super NES, and even higher. They had like all these crazy games, Terminator, but you know, their classic which rivaled Mario was Sega, the Sonic, well, was Sonic the Hedgehog. And uh, essentially Sonic the Hedgehog, like Mario, would run through these landscapes, going over obstacles, running, jumping, you know, his thing was super speed uh, without any mushroom power or whatever uh, to give him that burst of energy. Uh, the cocaine that Mario was sniffing, I guess, I don't know. But, uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, so he could do it naturally, I guess. And, you know, like Mario and his brother Luigi, he had a partner, Tails, uh, you know, on many of his games that those, the two-player option 
Uh, you could be Tails instead of Luigi with Mario, or in this case, Sonic. Uh, but essentially the game was pretty much the same as that, uh, except that instead of, um, you know, the boss, you know, the dragon or whatever, the Turtle King or whatever, in Mario Brothers, it was Dr. Robotnik, uh, you know, an evil professor that was always trying to take over Sonic's land or something. Uh, you know, pre pretty crazy stuff. And he'd send these robots and stuff instead of like little, you know, turtles or, uh, you know, or little monsters after like Mario. Uh, but that was essentially the game. Uh, and we get this story, uh, you know, but basically, you know, uh, we get the story, Sonic being Sega's premier flagship character, at least one of them that, you know, as you can tell from this movie, has survived for throughout uh, many generations, um, just like Mario. And uh, he's iconic. And thus, when last summer, those crazy images, the graphics that they were going to use for, Hedge for Sonic the Hedgehog looked so terrible, looked so foreign, that not like the original, just like in Birds of Prey, the audiences said, hey, we're not going to watch something that looks this crappy, you know, just like Birds of Prey. We're not going to, you know, you can name these characters whatever you want, but they're not the original, you know, from what they're based on, the video game or the comic book, you know. And Sonic had like a cartoon, and I think a couple of Sonic comic books came out too. Um, but, you know, he was mainly the uh, character in a video game. And that's where he got his start. And it's about time that he got into a movie much better, you know, much to the chagrin of Mario, much better than the Mario Brothers movie. Um, but it did take many, many years. Um, you know, but the company, Sega, uh, whoever did this movie, gosh, I can't even remember. Oh, uh, Universal, was it, I think? Uh, might have been, oh, Paramount. Might have been Paramount, I think, did this movie. And I think this is going to be a definite hit for Paramount as they did update and change the graphics to make him look more like the video game Sonic the Hedgehog character, you know, the cute little, you know, snarky uh, hedgehog that we all know and love uh, from the video game, fortunately. Um, and uh, with Ben Swartz doing the voice, you know, I, I had no idea what Sonic would actually sound like. I never watched the cartoon. I just played the video games. Um, but yeah, he, in this movie, we get a backstory, an origin of Sonic, we get an origin of James Marston, um, you know, being his friend, and also, most importantly, a, a backstory of Dr. Robotnik, one that makes sense, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, and, and we get to see actual, um, drama and, you know, light tear, I guess, of what a Robotnik character could possibly do. Uh, it would not be outside the realm of, to say that, hey, maybe Dr. Robotnik someday would have made, you know, uh, Skynet and the Terminators. Who knows? You know? <laughs> that's how devious uh, he actually is. And that's something, you know, playing the video game, you never really got that sense of dread. He was always kind of a joke. And I think uh, in the com or in the cartoon, he was a little bit of a joke like that too. But he actually did have menace and presence. And Jim Carrey does an excellent job of delivering that. Uh, he goes a little bit over the top at times, but I feel like I wrote in my uh, Instagram uh, review on this, that James Marston kind of pulls him back a little bit from the edge because he could go full Ace Ventura with this and he almost does. Um, but he still stays within the character's confines of Dr. Robotnik. And, uh, those of you who will notice, look at his hands. He's got gloved hands and on his hands are these little controllers very much like the Sega Genesis uh, controllers, <laughs> you know, on the palms. And that's how he controls all his robots and remote uh, toys that he sends after Sonic. Uh, but yes, yeah, so essentially uh, Sonic, we get that he is from another dimension, another planet. Um, but because he has this power of speed, uh, which isn't exactly explained, uh, think of the Flash 
uh, and the Speed Force, essentially. Uh, but it has, you know, that, that's, that's as close as I can surmise it to for you. So he can run at supersonic speeds, uh, faster than the speed of sound, uh, thus Sonic the Hedgehog, as he breaks the sonic sound barriers many times. Um, but also, you know, he can charge up this energy uh, into like an electric roll and roll as a hedgehog into objects, uh, thus destroying them. Uh, that was a major attack in the video games, and it is a major attack that he discovers that he can do in this movie as well. Um, so he, since he has this power, uh, he knows that people have always sought him out for his power, and he must always run away from them. Uh, at least that is what the great sage uh, who raised him tells him uh, to do and gives him those rings. Uh, whereas the video game, you would collect rings in Sonic, you know, run by and grab all these rings for points um, and prizes at the end of the video game. Very much like the coins in Mario. That's essentially it. But in this case, these rings are gateways to other universes, planets, uh, planes of existence, uh, you know, throughout the multiverse, I guess. Um, not really explained, but it doesn't need to be. Um, and so he runs away from his enemies using these rings when a planet becomes too threatening for him to just run and hide from them and get away from them. He has to actually leave and go to a whole new planet. And so he'd been living on Earth for about 10 years, uh, all alone, keeping out of sight, except for one person who sees the blue devil running around the forest, some crazy old man that nobody believes, fortunately, for Sonic. Um, but he befriends James Marston and Tiki Sumter, uh, Tika Sumter, uh, his wife, as they live in this small rural town, as he's the sheriff protecting people. Um, you know, basically he visits them, he stares through their windows, they're watching TV, and basically has this friendship with them without their knowledge, essentially. Uh, hanging out with them without them knowing that he's there. Uh, as they look somewhere, it's like, oh, what was that noise behind us? And zoom, he's gone. <laughs> you know, uh, because he has to keep to himself, uh, to keep himself safe. Unfortunately, as he has developed quite the loneliness syndrome in this, um, he kind of acts out and thus, without realizing, summons that electrical power that shorts out everything, um, you know, within uh, the Pacific Northwest, uh, kind of an EMP burst. And that is what brings the United States government to bear in on him, believing it could be an act of terrorism, and thus sending their technical expert, Dr. Robotnik, Jim Carrey, uh, to go hunt him down. And he discovers that this mysterious alien creature is afoot, and decides to hunt him down, realizing that he is a source of possibly unlimited power uh, thus his speed force. Uh, don't, don't say that to DC, they'll sue. Uh, <laughs> but essentially that's it. And James Marston, being at the wrong place at the wrong time, discovers him, takes him in, just as Dr. Robotnik uh, threatens to, you know, dissect him, essentially. And they go on the run together, uh, fleeing from Dr. Robotnik and his robots and the government forces. And thus, the entire plot commences. Um, so, yes, um, as much as Sonic looked like his character after the refits of the design of the graphics, uh, you know, you could say, eh, Jim Carrey, you know, because Dr. Robotnik was a, like a fat dude in the game, um, you know, he's got the glasses and he's got the little mustache, but it isn't until the end of the movie, as it sets up part, towards part two, that we see maybe Robotnik getting a little buffer and definitely looking much, much more like his uh, video game character. Uh, but you can definitely feel the spirit of his presence and character, Dr. Robotnik, throughout the entire movie. Um, so this movie has a solid plot a solid, you know, um, escape from the bad guys scenario, buddy team-up movie that actually works. Um, and I, 
you know, at first I wasn't sure. It's like, oh, why do we have to have Sonic in our world? He's supposed to be, you know, because it was never our world. It was some weird foreign world that Dr. Robotnik was on and, you know, that he was trying to, I guess, Sonic's world. Um, you know, and I think that way in the cartoons, too. Um, but here they bring him to Earth and that kind of works. You get to know him through James Marston's character. Um, and it was that kind of scenario that I feel brought me to compare this in my mind as I'm watching this, that I felt it was very Howard the Duck. If you remember that old 80s movie, which is, you know, trash talk to no end as a, bar a Marvel movie. That's where Marvel got its start uh, with that. Yeah, bombing on all these old movies. So anybody laughing at uh, DC, you know, you got to go back to the origins of the Marvel's movies and hey, they were just like uh, DC and Justice League, all that stuff before they are the mean machine of Marvel that they are now uh, with, <laughs> with Howard the Duck. But essentially Howard the Duck, uh, a comic book character, was brought from another dimension uh, onto Earth and is hunted down by an evil scientist uh, for his secrets very much like Sonic is here. So you can see a standard playbook in this movie uh, that they f use to take on this plot and follow it along. Um, but I definitely feel that the graphics, the CGI, um, you know, the special effects are so much better and more refined here that they actually work. You know, nowadays, if they did a Howard the Duck movie, uh, which I think James Gunn has said he wants to. Um, they have to take a page now from Sonic the Hedgehog. And, you know, he could actually show, it's like, hey, Marvel, you know, hey, Feige, my boss. <laughs> this, this, you know, a uh, Sonic the, you know, a Sonic the Hedgehog work, we could do uh, Howard the Duck just like it, you know. Um, uh, it still may not be enough to sway Feige into uh, letting him do it, but but it could be done, as I think this movie, Sonic the Hedgehog, will be very successful. Um, we have a strong male character, a strong female character with James Marston's wife, uh, that actually helps him uh, through some of the movie. Um, and, you know, keeps everything grounded in reality, despite these weird, uh, comical... Um, alien circumstances of a talking uh, blue uh, super speed hedgehog uh, that is kind of an anthropomorphic. <laughs> so yes, uh, it is a shock of thumbs up. If you loved the cartoon, the video games, whatever, uh, the comic I think even, um, you will enjoy this movie. It is well worth going to go see an opening night and definitely bring your kids as it is made for a kid's kind of movie, but adults will enjoy it too, especially those adults who had fond memories of playing the video game and, you know, have a fondness for Sonic uh, the Hedgehog as well. Uh, you can't go wrong. Uh, my theater was half filled with kids and they all loved it. There was nobody restless uh, you know, during the movie or talking during the movie, um, you know, that were bored. It, you know, it kept everybody on, on edge and on the seat. There were a couple of times with some of the dialogue that it's like, you know, I started to kind of, it's like, ooh, this is getting a little plot heavy or a little, you know, getting a little lengthy. But then it would burst into an action scene. Sonic would speed things up right away and get the plot moving again uh, fairly quickly so that helped out a lot and it kept the kids entertained so especially if you have children uh, you're going to go see a movie night you're done watching Doolittle the only thing out now uh, for kids go see Sonic the Hedgehog this movie will do well your kids will be entertained uh, you'll have to maybe hold on to them before and after the show as you know before the movie starts all the kids were like oh Sonic the Hedgehog They're running up and down the aisles woo you know? <laughs> <laughs> pretended to be Sonic, but, uh, you know, I, I didn't mind that. That's, I would have been doing the same thing, uh, back at that age. And, you know, if I was a little younger, uh, I'd still be doing that running up and down the aisle, uh, with the Sonic thing. But so it is a lot of fun. Shock a thumbs up for Sonic the Hedgehog. Go ahead and see it. Uh, well, you can, um, I've skipped, 
uh, seeing a movie uh, Friday. There's a couple other ones, Fantasy Island, and the photograph. Uh, very photograph is a very uh, Valentine's like movie, uh, which I'm sure will do okay on the drama side of the house. Uh, as it's not action-packed, it may not get very big numbers, but I'm I'm looking forward to seeing that. That looks uh, interesting as a dramatic, uh, you know, relationship movie. Um, so I'll give you my review. I'll probably see that Saturday and maybe Sunday, Fantasy Island. All right. Thank you so much. This is Trinidad, the Island Man, your Island Man, giving Sonic the Hedgehog shock a thumbs up. Go ahead and see it. You won't be disappointed. Definitely buy it later on iTunes or DVD uh, for your kids and they'll enjoy watching it. All right. Thank you so much.